is home. It's the focal point for UK Bungalow. Why are you making this documentary? I had to. I joined the University of Birmingham in September 2013. I soon found out there's a Bhangra society. I went down to one of the classes and I couldn't believe the turnout that was there. I was surrounded by tens if not hundreds of people and this was just for a class. I then learnt that there's a competition called the Bhangra Showdown. Birmingham actually performs in it and apparently this thing's quite competitive. I auditioned. I didn't make the team, but my friend from school did. He told me of the ridiculous hours he would have to train, five, six times a week. I have to go and watch this. February 2014 rolls around. All of a sudden I'm sitting in Hammersmith Apollo, one of the most iconic venues in the country. I'm surrounded by three, four thousand people. There were teams performing from all across England, from Leicester, Nottingham, Birmingham, London universities. This is a proper event. I saw firsthand the craze that existed here in the UK over a dance form that originated in Punjab. I remember watching Birmingham's performance. I turned to my left to my good friend Suki and said we have to be on stage next year. Until I went to uni I knew nothing about this competition. There's so many stories, controversies, moments of brilliance. I have to share them all with you. I have to share with you the Bhangra legacy. I joined the team in 2015. The first thing I learned was, fuck Imperial. It was like instilled in us in 2014 that they were the team to beat. They were our rivals. So Deepak and Ram, there was like kind of a friendship there, but it was tension at the same time. You could just tell they were both staples in the scene at that point, And they just wanted to get one over on each other. Because UOB had won all those times, you could tell that Ram was just, he hated it. It's just legendary in terms of how many years these two teams were sort of fighting it out. It's, it's really interesting because one of my really good friends actually, he did a, like a degree for a year at Imperial um, and he got into the Imperial team. And so I've only ever really seen it from the UOB side. And I think the image that we had in our head was, we need to batter Imperial and you know, we don't like their style of dancing. Our style of dancing is better. You know, we're UOB. No, no one can top us. Every competition we went into, we went to it with the mindset of fuck Imperial, we're going to win this. That's it. Simple. Job done. You think we have so much arrogance. They have another level of arrogance because they've come from one of the best unis in the country. They think they're a little bit above us. They're all doing like medicine. They're all doing de dentistry and stuff like that. They just think that they're just too sick. When I spoke to my friend Ben Raj, who danced for Imperial, he was talking about their opinion, their view. It's exactly the same against <laughs> their thoughts and their feelings against UOB, exactly the same. And then he came back to UOB and he felt that he couldn't dance for UOB <laughs> at all because of that, because of the fact that, you know, you're there and you're in that mindset of, we're the best, we have to battle this team that we're against. And, and that rivalry was just so intense. It was Imperial. We were always saying, oh, this is the year Imperial's going to win it. Because you could see them improving. They were getting better and better and better. Okay, uh, two more intro concept. My name is Amon Dunjal. I danced for Imperial College in 2012, 13 and 15. I'm Rav Chohan. I danced at TBS from 2012 to 2015. I remember watching Rav come second in 2014 and he captained the Imperial team in 2014. I remember him coming second and quite a close second and I could feel his heartbreak. So 2014 comes around and the big part of this was it was now kind of on my shoulders a little bit. And that and that's something that every captain has to face at some point, right? In 2014, I was like, let me try doing what I can as much as possible myself. And then I had Krish, who was keen on learning as well. So I thought, let's get Krish on board. I wanted to get involved in a bigger capacity. 
well then just don't see. This is my last year at uni. We need someone to you know, take the reins after. We don't want to be one of them teams that just has like a had like a three, four year era and then disappeared. We wanted UOB to be always near the top. We always stayed ahead of them, but they always kept us on our toes. So it was a case of, oh, we know Imperial are going to bring a mad set. We need to do better than that. On the day, it would always be, oh, Imperial have performed. How did they do? Was it any good? The likes of Ram, Mahi, all these like, like, we'd still talk to them. We'd still have banter with them, but we'd still keep our distance in a way. You know, you'd, you'd have your jokes with them, but us and them were working behind the scenes to try and absolutely destroy one another at showdown. It was a nice rivalry, I ain't like, we wouldn't be as good as we are. They wouldn't be as good as they were without that there. You could say, you know, in some ways, you know, we were better, in some ways they were better. We're in a waiting area, which is pretty much like a, a coach. <laughs> they had no space, there's like 1,000 people backstage because the teams are so big. Everyone was like waiting on coaches at, at points while other, team, other teams performed. So sitting on our coach in Vardy, I think we performed before, um, before Imperial. Me and Hash are sitting in the back. We're watching videos our mates are sending in from the audience. We're looking at the videos, we're thinking we've killed it and it's gone well. Whilst that's happening, Imperial are on stage at that point. We hear they perform. We hear they've absolutely smashed it out of the park. I get these texts through from D, all these other people, right, like messaging me, Imperial did well, you know. And you know when someone close to you says, Imperial did well, that they've actually killed it, but they don't want to tell you they've killed it because they know you think you're going to come second. So I was just sitting at the back thinking, this is the first year I've had the reins. I've put so much time and effort into this team. We've told the team, so we've told them we don't know what's going to happen now, it? Everyone's kind of guided, like preparing ourselves that we may have just got second place, third place maybe. We've placed, pretty much. We've gone on stage, lined up, so the top three teams are there. They call third place, which was Aston. It's We're kind of just heads down, expecting that it, it could go the other way. Uh, we may not win this. Second place just isn't going to cut it for me. That would feel like last place to me. Either way, you have to win. First place, the winner of the Bangladesh Showdown 2014 is... The win was called for UOB and I didn't know how to react. There's a video as well, I was just kind of at the back. I didn't know what was going on, shed a couple of tears um, and, that, and that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, easy, easy. I don't think there's, any, I, there's nothing close. The specifics of the, uh, the result, I think it was tight enough that you, you can't be too begrudged either way. If you lose it on uh, that when it's that close, it's always tight and you just accept it. It is what it is. It was very difficult. I thoroughly enjoyed the 2014 set. Rav Chahana is a good friend of mine and when I watched the videos, I really liked that Imperial set. But I do agree. I do agree that uh, UOB deserved to win that year. I, I have a, a view on this, which is that U UOB were on a bit of a winning streak, right? They won in 2013, they came in as favourites in 2014 and coming in as favourites, if you don't disappoint, then you should win, right? They played to their strengths and everybody else around them, including Imperial, tried hard to beat them. And sometimes if you try too hard, you can make mistakes. And so I think that's what cost Imperial in the end. So absolutely fair play to them. They came in and, and played to their strengths and they won. So I think they deserved it. In my opinion, I thought we did really well and I would have loved the win, but I wouldn't go back and say, you know, they didn't deserve it at all. No, 100%, they, they did what they needed to do and they executed it on the day, so 100%. That first place UOB, again, that ecstasy from 2011 back again. It was insane, it was insane. 
you'll be created like carved itself as an identity like you could if you watched a UOB set from that time 2011 to maybe 2015 2014 those four years and there was no and it didn't say underneath the video who was dancing what 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 it was you knew that was a UOB set a lot of teams don't have an identity we had an identity and I think that's and that's everything so I learned about the rivalry with Imperial, but I still didn't know how UOB Bhangra started. My name's Jasri Singh Punya. I'm a third generation Bhangra dancer. I danced for UOB between 2008 and 2011, and then I also did as an alumni 2014 as well. Prior to me starting, there were always little Bhangra teams that would pop up at UOB. How about we do something whereby we start a team and we start a society and also do something like the Bhangra Showdown. I think a lot of people take TPS for granted that it's something that happens every year and I think people forget a few things. Number one, people forget that it is students that run the competition in their spare time while doing a degree. I think a lot of people also forget that it's for charity. All the profit that is made goes for charity. But the thing that I want to focus on is that in 2007, this was just one man's idea, right? Imperial Punjabi Society was newly formed. There was a small committee and it was one man in the Raj. It was his idea that, hey, we have these competitions in the US and in India and stuff like that. Why can't we do something like that? I'm quite proud of Punjabi culture. Maybe we can do something. We've got friends at other London universities. Maybe we can come together and do a little competition. So 2007 is I think when Bangla showdown started. So yeah, we were all aware about it. At that particular point, it was North America, Canada. That scene was kicking it, right? And everyone used to laugh at UK Bhangra. That's the honest truth. Everyone laughed at UK Bhangra, right? It was just, it, it was, it was not good, to put it this way, right? People would, you know, look down on the idea. Bhangra wasn't really this respected thing that you see now. People would laugh and think, well, what are you going to do for two hours of training? Are you just going to pre-session to go out for a gig after and that's kind of the mentality a lot of people had at that time certainly that's changed now you go on campus now and you're part of the university Bhangra team there's some sort of gravitas behind that there's some sort of respect there was nothing then Imandeep was president and there were two other key players uh, Abhijit Gill and Hadeep Tanjul they were the kind of core people who without any prior experience came together on that same cause to go and find a venue to go and secure the Indigo O2 with 1,200 people capacity to go and source sponsorship, to engage teams. This is before any social media or anything like that. People barely had smartphones. Hardcore advertising, physical flyering to try and generate interest. It's really that effort by that core group of people that then made allowed TBS to grow each year. And it's only been taken higher since. Like, Ram Joshi, Mai Paul Gil, they were the first to basically triple the scale and take it to Apollo. They were the ones who added some more sort of professionalism to the whole thing. We went from doing nothing to dancing in front of, what, thousands of people? having never done professional dancing before, so for us it was crazy. Like, how do you go from dancing like in your living room or a wedding to professionally in front of judges, in front of thousands? It's, it's, it's another level, so we were just crazy excited. When I started as a fresher in 2008, we put an audition tape together didn't think we'd get in, thought we'd be laughed off. And within a week, we got accepted into TBS. So you had Jazz Poonian, who was captain of the Bhangra team. And, and Jazz was known as, I would say, the best dancer in the UK. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't have to put a set of mix together. We didn't have a logo. We didn't have to put a Varti together, nothing. We need to get 16 dancers together, eight guys, eight girls. I went to every society, India society, medic societies. At one point, I was literally asking anyone, can you dance? Let's see what we can do and, and, and put something together. And just trained ridiculous hours for this routine for TBS in 2009. Going into the first competition, we had nothing to lose. We came third, which was great. You know, obviously I wanted to come first, but we didn't understand competition. We didn't understand rubric. Moving on, 2010, we just wanted to be bigger. Freshers would want to come to our society. We'd have these big classes and that word had spread about the Bhangra team and the Bhangra society. So it was a lot easier to get more and more people involved. In fact, we had too many dancers. 2010 TBS was a big learning curve. We took on too much. We came fourth. 
in that year. It was very sad. We didn't even play, so we came fourth, and it was heartbreaking to be honest. It was like it was a real shock to the system. <laughs> and that was hilarious. We we went into that showdown thinking we're gonna annihilate everything. Everyone around the world's gonna be like UOV's killed it, and we just embarrassed ourselves uh, massively. So you know, everyone was gassing set, saying to all their mates, "Make sure you come showdown. We're gonna win." Sent sent coaches and coaches of people down, uh, and yeah, didn't even play. So that was that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> As much as we might have had the best answer or what people consider to be the best answers, we realized in 2010 that that is just simply not enough. We, we learned, keep your mouth shut, put the work in. I think that was that that kind of defined UOB. People didn't really know, really know much about Bongrad. That set in 2010, like anyone who's seen it will know there were bits that you know were taken from other sets abroad. When the set came out, everyone saw the choreo. Yeah, UOB just got ripped to shreds and that, that made us think, Number one, focus on making your own stuff, be original, be creative, work hard, keep your mouth shut, let the set do the talking on the day. There was a big shakeout after TBS 2010 at Birmingham. It really changed where before jazz, you know, was, was taking on a lot of the responsibility. And then that year, you know, I think Deepak and I both said we're quite keen to to help out with the choreography. And I think having the three of us together was, was critical to, to bring the trophy home. I was on the verge of not doing the 2011 showdown. It came down to Jas Poonian and Rami. Let's all sit down, let's have a chat. We need to retain our dancers. So you had Rami there, you had myself, you had Jazz. We were really starting to look at ourselves and saying, what we're doing here is not correct. We're not doing segments properly. There's no actual structure to anything that we're doing. So we went on a learning process, basically. Jas, Rami and Dee just doing their research on Bhangra. Probably from the day after we completely messed up 2010, there was a hunger in them to just, you know, we need to we need to improve, we need to learn. BTF came along, Bhangra Teams Forum. To be honest with you, I've read that forum inside out. It, trying to learn from the foundation up, it wasn't like, let's skip and try to learn how to make an American style winning set right now. Let's learn the fundamentals of Bhangra, let's see how moves should be done, how sets should be structured. Then we started to realise that there is a certain way that things should be done. And obviously you can play within those parameters, but we need we don't even have parameters at the moment. We're clueless. You can't show up at a competition the year before and get embarrassed like that. That, for me, was embarrassing. And I think for, for Rami, for Jack, I think we were all embarrassed. 2011 was the first time they did um, Hammersmith Apollo. So that's when you can see a jump from 1,200, 1,500 people to uh, I don't know the capacity, what is it, 3,000, 3,300, something like that. Relief, to be honest. Relief. It was just it just showed that all the hours and everything that we'd gone through was essentially vindicated. You feel on top of the world. It's yeah, you can't describe it to anyone, but I think that win is what made me think I need to feel this again. Because there's literally nothing like it. When we won the next day as well after 2011 showed and I was like I need to feel this again. I can't. I can't leave Bhangra now after such a high, a high point. Who knows how far we could go? So I was like, I, I need to carry on. It was a fairy tale ending for me. It was all those efforts, all those late nights, all those, you know, pushing the boundaries to choreo, fitness sacrifices with my own education at times, made it all worth it. 2011 marked the beginning of hopefully like the foundation that then led to you know Berlin having a lot of success for the for the subsequent years. One, two, three, four. Yeah, definitely.
Dr. Bingo. My name is Gary Jandu and I'm the captain of Astor for TBS 2022. Hi, my name's Ashti. My name's Ria. My name's Corin Baines. I'm training for the Central team. The new challenge here is that you've got a team of fresh new dancers. All of those officials out the window, you were too, too dark. You're back to the bed, you're jumping like that, you're a team of jumping, everything is fucking shit. Talk me out, control yourself. It's been quite hard, like, I won't lie. It's been. It's been a tough journey. It's really scary, but it's, you know, an experience that is just kind of like once in a lifetime when it comes to uni. Like, you do uni and then you move on, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. We push ourselves a lot. You know, I feel like we don't come to training and just think, okay, let's just, you know, clock watch. We're putting in hours inside training, outside training to make sure that, you know, we can perform what we want to. So yeah, just, you know, winner's mentality. When you like when you watch them, you think, oh, it's not going to be that hard, like getting into formation or whatever. But then when you're when you're there, every class is something different. Every class gets harder and harder. When you watch 2020, any of those years, you know that Aston's the best. Like every university knows Aston's, like Aston's team are the best. So when you come into that role I, as like yellow Tory, so whoever was yellow Tory before me, I, I feel that role. So yeah, there's pressure there. There is pressure, but you know you got to use that to fuel us fresher dancers who haven't really done this before. For us, we know what we need to do, we know how hard we need to train, but it's def definitely difficult motivating a group of new people who have never done Bhangra before. Don't really, they really just see it as a little bit of shock and a hit laugh in it, but when it comes to training, especially at Aston, in my opinion, compared to other teams, we take it like to a, maybe from there to there. I went to Aston University's practice three, four weeks out before comp. It was a shambles. Half the set was still to be choreoed like three weeks beforehand. But basically the whole set changed from January. Honestly, we thought it was going to be possible. Like four weeks out, three weeks out, two weeks out. Like what are we going to do? We don't have a drum we don't have a rupti. We have a rupti. Shit. We need to do ending, we need to change ending, we need to change this drop, we need to clean that. Yeah, the chaos was very chaotic. You know, there was a lot of instability from the get-go. People coming and going, you know, we had 31 dancers in total from the start. You know, some people came for one session, dropped out straight away after. People, you know, just can't hack it. We were so desensitised to having such a stable team over the last three years. The same dancers and those same dancers got better and better and better and that's why it was at the top. But like Jay said, this was a complete reset for Aston Pungra. We didn't have help or involvement from the Shawns or, you know, from the get-go. That came towards the, the latter part of it. After speaking to Jay and Gurdeep, they relayed that they experienced a lot of unprofessionalism from the committee and the things I was hearing kind of couldn't believe. About a week before comp, they sent us a message saying that they're going to consider harsher penalties and just losing tech time, which was going to come in the form of docking us points. So the initial threats were no tech time and docking points off a performance. So I actually got on the phone to the committee. It's my duty to tell you guys, because end of the day, I loved Bhangra. I still do love Bhangra. The competition was always secondary to me. And it, it was about the community and what Bhangra bred for the, like, like the UK. This is absolutely ridiculous. You can't do that. In no circumstances, at least in my career, have I ever experienced my team or any other team being docked points before the show. In my opinion, the only people that should have influence on the results are the judges. I mean, what else do we get judges for? I wanted to dock a point, which has never been done in the history of TBS. Three days before comp, it was on the Thursday. We were still sorting out our ending. We had a five or six hour practice on that day and we spent three hours on the phone to the committee. At the time, it was fucked. Simply put it, it was fucked. You know, we're messing with people psychologically here now. We're going into a comp and thinking, shit, we've got one point less here now. And typically, a point is something significant. You know, like last year, you know, on the score sheets, it's like it was 0 0.6, or fine margins. So from 0 0.6 to a point, it was like, okay, shit now, what, what's going on here, right? Yes, they did an amazing job at like, you know, putting on the show after coronavirus, but I was quite disappointed. I was like very disappointed in just their level of understanding. 
I think they don't have any understanding of what it's like to be a Bhangra dancer. They haven't ever done Bhangra before. And I think that's quite important. It was our last dress rehearsal and the decision from the committee was Pakka, they wasn't going to change it. They were, it was final. They weren't having any of it. We're struggling here. There's no compassion, no sympathy or empathy in this. They just said, plain, straight, simple, fuck you, you're getting a point deducted. And teams wanted more than a point deducted from us. That's the main thing, right? There, um, there was no consultation between us, not that Jay or Gurdjieff can be in this conversation. They can be muted, but they can hear out what's going to be said. A whole Zoom call meeting was held with all the other captains and the committee to, for them to decide in a dem democratic way what should happen to Aston Bhangra. And it was very targeted because the way phone calls went, it's not just the point that we're taking uh, from the mix, sorry. You know, we feel you've been disrespectful to us, the way you've spoken to us, the way you've ignored phone calls. Hang on a minute, we're taking training here, you're trying to call, well, we're taking a five hour training session. Yeah, uh, not to sound arrogant, but you need teams like Kings, Leicester and Aston Bhangra at, at your, your showdown or you're just not going to get a good show. No disrespect to other teams, but who's been dominating the, the, the place in the last three, four years? That's because those are the hard working teams. Those are the teams that want it, right? So how are you then going to go try and shaft one of those teams, take a point? It doesn't make sense. I remember watching Rav come second in 2014. I could feel his heartbreak. That really motivated me to say, right, I'm going to do this next year with him because he was still around. And we're going to make this happen. We're going to have to bounce back from this because we're so close. We can make this happen now. We can win. If you look at our rankings up until that point, we had steadily just made our way up by fourth, third, second. You know, we, f we felt like we narrowly missed out in 14. This was the shot now. We thought, let's definitely go for it. My thought process around, around idea generation started pretty much the day after the last show in 2014. But things got really serious about four months before the show. And then it was every waking moment and sometimes even dreaming about it. If I wasn't in lectures, it was dedicated to, to winning the competition. I had ideas on how I wanted the stage to look as a whole from a performance point of view, how I wanted the stage to move, the mechanics of formations. Coming from an engineering background, that's easy to visualise for me. URB have definitely been putting in some great performances. About the time you had teams like George is doing really well. Kings are always kind of a, a threat as well. So we always look towards the, you know, the Midlands and URB. This was a, a, a classic thing with them. They were just very good at what they do. <laughs> Training was crazy. We had intense sessions literally every day. Even during Christmas, when we were at home, we would self-record the routine and get feedback over Facebook. Chris was our captain that year. You could see the passion that he had. I think the team felt that and they wanted to dance for him. Then 2015 came along and I was like, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing. I was co-captain 2015, but I was, it was more of like a backseat role. I was just trying to learn. If Chris was not there, we would not have a set. He did literally everything. If you see UOB's wins previously, so you've got 2011, they've won. 2012, they've come second, but they're the best music set. 2013 they've won and 2014 they've won. So essentially the UOB have had the best music set four years on it. That's a lot of pressure. 2015 comes and I'm pretty confident in myself. Um, I'm able to make a complete set. As the weeks went on, we became more and more familiar with our set. In January, the venue was announced.
we found out that we were going to be performing at Wembley Arena. It literally doesn't get bigger than this. Shit just got real. Uh, we invest months practicing for what is essentially eight minutes on stage, but it's that feeling at the end of that process where you know that it's been worth it. We've got a really powerful set, lots of folk elements. Definitely, yeah. I think the key word is uh, oh. Uh, all I can say is totally unexpected. Just like that, practice was done. As a rookie, essentially, when you go to your first competition, there are loads of emotions that you feel. Obviously, the nerves, that's the one thing everybody talks about, but also the fearlessness, because it's, it's the unknown. It's something that you... You don't really know what to expect. It was just breathtaking to be there on stage. The crowd, the noise, the energy, being there as a team, it was just something that all together was really incredible. It was just an incredible experience. Second is probably the worst placing ever. Like, I'd rather come last than second. When you don't win, it, it's a bad feeling. Imperial definitely deserved to win 2015. When we were there, you're watching it, they just had everything. Like, everything a winning set needs, for sure. Come on, Imperial. on stage in 2015 was my best experience dancing ever. Oh, amazing. It had been a long, long build-up. You know, I've been dancing for a few years. 
putting out the sets, obviously not, not, not getting the win up until that point. So it felt like everything came together at the right point. I think I was in disbelief. Um, <laughs> honestly, I was so shocked because I, I knew it was going to be a good performance, but then winning by those sorts of margins, like when you look at the mark schemes of what the judges thought, clear cut winners, and I honestly thought, you know, that was true testament to the hard work that the whole team put in and also Raven Amman because they were at the front of leading, uh, you know, I think a historic win in, in the Bangladesh showdown. It's one of the performances that are, is hugely remembered by everyone that's in the scene. It had been five years. I think the last time Imperial won was 2010. To win the competition overall was, was just incredible. The main issue was that there was a point where people were giving up, they wanted to stop, they couldn't hack it, exams or whatever it was. And it did come to a point where we had to sit everyone down and just be like, if you're doing this, you've got to stay. And I can't hear any excuses, nothing about work, nothing about this or that. If you're going to do this, put your 100% into it. If you can't, and some people need to drop out now, we're just going to drop out. Because I'm not going forward with a comp with people that aren't 100% invested. So the other big thing in 2015 was my injury. So I was initially dancing. I've always had an issue with my knees, like for the past two competitions anyway. Again, putting in all the hard work and not being able to dance what you've choreoed is, is, is a big shame. I not only did I have to replace myself, but all the Geordies again had to be shifted around so that, you know, the right people are in the right spots throughout the set. The strongest people generally are at the front, that's just how it is. Uh, the stronger dancers usually have more airtime. And to be honest, the whole team was so upset. I remember Hardo, like, he was crying. You know what it is? I joined 2014 and I won. And in 2014 GCC, I won. So for me, it's almost like I was spoiled because I was just winning 24-7. And then with like 2015, I think we all thought we were going to win. And then when we didn't, it was just like, like, I'm not used to this. It's just like three, four months of hard work and it just goes to kind of waste, really. I think for us, it was always first or nothing. So it doesn't matter if you're second or third. For us, it, it was a loss. I was like, I understand, like, we've got, we've got second. It's a good placing, but it's not what we wanted. But don't cry, you've got next year, you know what I mean? I was upset at first, but then after I was like, why am I upset? Well, I've got next year. Let's work on it. Let's try to get first next year.